Scholars have attempted to reconstruct the phonology of Old Chinese from documentary evidence. Although the writing system does not describe sounds directly, shared phonetic components of the most ancient Chinese characters are believed to link words that were pronounced similarly at that time. The oldest surviving Chinese verse, in the classic of poetry, Xijing, shows which words rhymed in that period. Scholars have compared these bodies of contemporary evidence with the much later Middle Chinese reading pronunciations listed in the Key and Rhyme Dictionary published in 601 AD, though this falls short of a phonemic analysis. Supplementary evidence has been drawn from cognates in other Sino-Tibetan languages and in Min Chinese, which split off before the Middle Chinese period, Chinese transcriptions of foreign names, and early borrowings from and by neighboring languages such as Hmong Min, Thai and Tocharian languages. Although many details are disputed, most recent reconstructions agree on the basic structure. It is generally agreed that Old Chinese differed from Middle Chinese in lacking retroflex and palatal obstruents but having initial consonant clusters of some sort, and in having voiceless sonorants. Most recent reconstructions also posit consonant clusters at the end of the syllable, developing into tone distinctions in Middle Chinese. Syllable structure Although many details are still disputed, recent formulations are in substantial agreement on the core issues. For example, the old Chinese initial consonants recognized by Li Fang Kui and William Baxter are given below, with Baxter's mostly tentative additions given in parentheses. Most scholars reconstruct clusters of asterisk s with other consonants, and possibly other clusters as well, but this area remains unsettled. In recent reconstructions, such as the widely accepted system of Baxter, 1992, the rest of the Old Chinese syllable consists of an optional medial asterisk r, an optional medial asterisk j, or, in some reconstructions, some other representation of a distinction between type a and Type B syllables, one of six vowels, an optional coda, which could be a glide asterisk J or asterisk W, a nasal asterisk M, asterisk N or asterisk, or a stop asterisk P, asterisk T, asterisk K or asterisk K, an optional post coda asterisk or asterisk S. In such systems, Old Chinese has no tones. The rising and departing tones of Middle Chinese are treated as reflexes of the Old Chinese post codas. Initials The primary sources of evidence for the reconstruction of the Old Chinese initials are medieval rhyme dictionaries and phonetic clues in the Chinese script. Middle Chinese initials The reconstruction of Old Chinese often starts from early Middle Chinese, the phonological system of the Qian, a rhyme dictionary published in 601, with many revisions and expansions over the following centuries. According to its preface, the Qian did not record a single contemporary dialect, but set out to codify the pronunciations of characters to be used when reading the classics, incorporating distinctions made in different parts of China at the time, a diasystem. These dictionaries indicated pronunciation using the Fanchi method, dividing a syllable into an initial consonant and the rest, called the final. Rhymed tables from the Song dynasty contain a sophisticated feature analysis of the key and initials and finals, though not a full phonemic analysis. Moreover, they were influenced by the different pronunciations of that later period. Scholars have attempted to determine the phonetic content of the various distinctions by examining pronunciations in modern varieties and loans in Japanese, Korean and Vietnamese, the Sinazenic materials, but many details regarding the finals are still disputed. The key and distinguishes the following initials, each traditionally named with an exemplary word and classified according to the rhyme table analysis, by studying sound glosses given by Eastern Han authors. The Qing philologist Xi'an Doxin discovered that the Middle Chinese dental and retroflex style Top series were not distinguished at that time. The resulting inventory of 32 initials, omitting the rare initial is still used by some scholars within China, such as He Jiang. 
Early in the 20th century, Huang Khan identified 19 Middle Chinese initials that occurred with a wide range of finals, calling them the original ancient initials, from which the other initials were secondary developments. Evidence from phonetic series Although the Chinese writing system is not alphabetic, comparison of words whose characters share a phonetic element a phonetic series yields much information about pronunciation. Often the characters in a phonetic series are still pronounced alike, as in the character Zhang, Zhang, middle, which was adapted to write the words Chong, poor, Chong and Zhang, loyal. In other cases the words in a phonetic series have very different sounds in any known variety of Chinese, but are assumed to have been similar at the time the characters were chosen. A key principle, first proposed by the Swedish sinologist Bernhard Karlgren, holds that the initials of words written with the same phonetic component had a common point of articulation in Old Chinese. For example, since Middle Chinese dentals and retroflex stops occur together in phonetic series, they are traced to a single Old Chinese dental series, with the retroflex stops conditioned by an Old Chinese medial asterisk R. The Middle Chinese dental sibilants and retroflex sibilants also occur interchangeably in phonetic series, and are similarly traced to a single Old Chinese sibilant series, with the retroflex sibilants conditioned by the Old Chinese medial asterisk R. However, there are several cases where quite different Middle Chinese initials appear together in a phonetic series. Karlgren and subsequent workers have proposed either additional Old Chinese consonants or initial consonant clusters in such cases. For example, the Middle Chinese palatal sibilants appear in two distinct kinds of series, with dentals and with velars, Zhou Xiu, Cycle, Zhou Dynasty, Diao Tiu, Carve, and Diao Diu, Adjust, Ji Xie, Cut Out, and Ji Kai. Mad Dog it is believed that the palatals arose from dentals and velars followed by an old Chinese medial asterisk J, unless the medial asterisk R was also present. While all such dentals were palatalized, the conditions for palatalization of velars are only partly understood see medials below. Similarly, it is proposed that the asterisk R medial could occur after labials and velars, complementing the instances proposed as sources of Middle Chinese retroflex dentals and sibilants, to account for such connections as by PJET writing pencil and Lu LJ wet law, rule, GN cam, look at, and lan lam, indigothus the Middle Chinese lateral L is believed to reflect Old Chinese asterisk. R. Old Chinese voiced and voiceless laterals asterisk L and asterisk L are proposed to account for a different group of series such as Tuo Dua, Peel Off, Yujawat, Pleased, and Shuo Shua. Speak this treatment of the Old Chinese liquids is further supported by Tibeto-Burman cognates and by transcription evidence. For example, the name of the city Alexandria was transcribed in the Book of Han as Wu Yi Shan Li, which is reconstructed as asterisk A L K S R Jan R J A J. Traces of the earlier liquids are also found in the divergent Huashang dialect of Western Hunan. Voiceless nasal initials asterisk M, asterisk N, and asterisk are proposed following Dong Tong and Edwin Pulleyblank in series such as Mo Mok Inc. and Hey X, Black Nan Nan, Difficult, and Tan Than, Foreshore, New NG Jack, Cruel, and Shui XJAK, to ridicule clusters asterisk SN and so on are proposed following Karlgren for alternations of Middle Chinese nasals and S such as Ru Nizwo, Resemble, and Shu SJWO, Ra Silk. Other cluster initials, including asterisk S with stops or stops with asterisk L, have been suggested but their existence and nature remains an open question. Back initials The Song Dynasty rhymed tables classified key and syllables as either open kai kai, or closed hey hey, with the latter believed to indicate a medial W or lip rounding. This medial was unevenly distributed, being distinctive only after velar and laryngeal initials or before I, and or it. This is taken following André Georges Haudricourt and Sergei Yakontov to indicate that Old Chinese had labiovelar and labiolaryngeal initials but no labiovelar medial. The remaining occurrences of Middle Chinese W are believed to result from breaking of a back vowel before these codas see vowels below, as Middle Chinese G occurs only in palatal environments, Li attempted to derive both G and T from Old Chinese asterisk, but had to assume irregular developments in some cases. Li Rong showed that several words with Middle Chinese initial th were distinguished in modern Min dialects. For example, Hu Thick and Hu after were both U in Middle Chinese, but have velar and zero initials respectively in several Min dialects. Most authors now assume both asterisk and asterisk, with subsequent lenition of asterisk in non-palatal environments. 
Similarly, asterisk W is assumed as the labialized counterpart of asterisk. Pan Wuyan has proposed a revision of the above scheme to account for the fact that Middle Chinese glottal stop and laryngeal fricatives occurred together in phonetic series, unlike dental stops and fricatives, which were usually separated. Instead of the glottal stop initial asterisk and fricatives asterisk H and asterisk, he proposed uvular stops asterisk Q, asterisk Q and asterisk, and similarly labia uvular stops asterisk Q, asterisk Q and asterisk in place of asterisk, asterisk H and asterisk W. Evidence from Min Chinese modern Min dialects, particularly those of Northwest Fujian, show reflexes of distinctions not reflected in Middle Chinese. For example, the following dental initials have been identified in reconstructed proto-min. Other points of articulation show similar distinctions within stops and nasals. Proto-min voicing is inferred from the development of min tones, but the phonetic values of the initials are otherwise uncertain. The sounds indicated as asterisk t, asterisk d, etc. are known as softened stops due to their reflexes in Zhanyang and nearby min varieties in northwestern Fujian, where they appear as fricatives or approximants, e.g., vlh. For example, although Old Chinese is believed to have had both voiced and voiceless nasals, only the voiced ones yield Middle Chinese nasals, corresponding to both sorts of proto-min nasal. The old Chinese antecedents of these distinctions are not yet agreed, with researchers proposing a variety of consonant clusters. Medials The most contentious aspect of the rhyme tables is their classification of the key and finals into four divisions, deng deng. Most scholars believe that finals of divisions I and IV contained back and front vowels respectively. Division 2 is believed to represent retroflexion, and is traced back to the Old Chinese asterisk R medial discussed above, while Division 3 is usually taken as indicating a J medial. Since Karlgren, many scholars have projected this medial, but not W, back onto Old Chinese. The following table shows Baxter's account of the Old Chinese initials and medials leading to the combinations of initial and final types found in early Middle Chinese. Here asterisk P, asterisk T, asterisk TS, asterisk K and asterisk K stand for consonant classes in Old Chinese. Columns III 3 and III 4 represent the Chongyu distinction among some syllables with division 3 finals, which are placed in rows 3 or 4 of the Song dynasty rhyme tables. The two are generally identical in modern Chinese varieties, but Sinazenic forms often have a palatal element for III4 but not III3. Baxter's account departs from the earlier reconstruction of Li Fang Kui in its treatment of asterisk J and asterisk RJ after labial and guttural initials. Li proposed asterisk KRJ as the source of palatal initials occurring in phonetic series with velars or laryngeals, found no evidence for asterisk PRJ, and attributed the Chongyu distinction to the vowel. Following proposals by Pulleyblank, Baxter explains Chongyu using asterisk RJ and postulates that plain velars and laryngeals were palatalized when followed by both asterisk J, but not asterisk RJ, and a front vowel. However a significant number of palatalizations are not explained by this rule. Type A and B syllables A fundamental distinction within Middle Chinese is between syllables with division 3 finals and the rest, labeled types B and A respectively by pulleyblank. Most scholars believe that type B syllables were characterized by a palatal medial J in Middle Chinese. Although many authors have projected this medial back to a medial asterisk J in Old Chinese, others have suggested that the Middle Chinese medial was a secondary development not present in Old Chinese. Evidence includes the use of type B syllables to transcribe foreign words lacking any such medial, the lack of the medial in Tibeto-Burman cognates and modern Min reflexes, and the fact that it is ignored in phonetic series. Nonetheless, scholars agree that the difference reflects a real phonological distinction of some sort, often described noncommittally as a distinction between type A and B syllables using a variety of notations. The distinction has been variously ascribed to the presence or absence of a prefix. Jakontov held that type B reflected a prefix asterisk D, while Furless suggested that type A arose from an unstressed prefix asterisk C, a minor syllable, which conditioned syllabic tenseness contrasting with laxness in type B syllables, a length distinction of the main vowel. Pulleyblank initially proposed that type B syllables had longer vowels, but Starostin and Zhengzheng later proposed long vowels for type A and short vowels for type B. 
a prosodic distinction, as later proposed by Pulley Blank. Pharyngealization of the initial consonant. Norman suggested that type B syllables, his class C, which comprised over half of the syllables of the Qiyan, were in fact unmarked in Old Chinese. Instead, he proposed that the remaining syllables were marked by retroflexion, the asterisk R medial, or pharyngealization, either of which prevented palatalization in Middle Chinese. Baxter and Sigart have adopted a variant of this proposal, reconstructing pharyngealized initials in all type A syllables. Vowels a reconstruction of Old Chinese finals must explain the rhyming practice of the Xijing, a collection of songs and poetry from the 10th to 7th centuries BC. Again some of these songs still rhyme in modern varieties of Chinese, but many do not. This was attributed to lax rhyming practice until the late Ming dynasty scholar Chen Di argued that a former consistency had been obscured by sound change. The systematic study of Old Chinese rhymes began in the 17th century, when Gu Yun Wu divided the rhyming words of the Xijing into ten rhyme groups yun bu yun bu. These groups were subsequently refined by other scholars, culminating in a standard set of 31 in the 1930s. One of these scholars, Duan Yukai, stated the important principle that characters in the same phonetic series would be in the same rhyme group, making it possible to assign almost all words to rhyme groups, assuming that rhyming syllables had the same main vowel. Li Fang Kui proposed a system of four vowels asterisk i, asterisk u, asterisk and asterisk a. He also included three diphthongs asterisk i, asterisk ia and asterisk ua to account for syllables that were placed in rhyme groups reconstructed with asterisk or asterisk a but were distinguished in Middle Chinese. In the late 1980s, Zheng Zheng Shangfang, Sergei Starostin and William Baxter following Nicholas Bodman independently argued that these rhyme groups should be split, refining the 31 traditional rhyme groups into more than 50 groups corresponding to a six-vowel system. Baxter supported this thesis with a statistical analysis of the rhymes of the Xijing, though there were too few rhymes with codas asterisk p, asterisk m and asterisk k to produce statistically significant results. The following table illustrates these analyses, listing the names of the 31 traditional rhyme groups with their Middle Chinese reflexes and their postulated Old Chinese vowels in the systems of Li and Baxter. Following the traditional analysis, the rhyme groups are organized into three parallel sets, depending on the corresponding type of coda in Middle Chinese. For simplicity, only Middle Chinese finals of divisions I and IV are listed, as the complex vocalism of divisions II and III is believed to reflect the influence of Old Chinese medials asterisk R and asterisk J. See previous section. Tones and final consonants there has been much controversy over the relationship between final consonants and tones, and indeed whether Old Chinese lacked the tones characteristic of later periods, as first suggested by the Ming dynasty scholar Chen Di. The four tones of Middle Chinese were first described by Shen Yu around AD 500. They were the level, ping ping, rising, shang shang, departing, ku ku, and entering. Ru Ru tones, with the last category consisting of the syllables ending in stops P, T or K. Although rhymes in the Xijing usually respect these tone categories, there are many cases of characters that are now pronounced with different tones rhyming together in the songs, mostly between the departing and entering tones. This led Duan Yukai to suggest that Old Chinese lack the departing tone. Wang Nianson (1744–1832) and Zhang Yugo (d.1851) decided that the language had the same tones as Middle Chinese, but some words had later shifted between tones, a view that is still widely held among linguists in China. Karlgren also noted many cases where words in the departing and entering tones shared a phonetic element, e.g., "li li," depend on, and "li lot," wicked. Kai Ki, cough, and Kai Kok, cut, engrave. He suggested that the departing tone words in such pairs had ended with a final voiced stop, asterisk D or asterisk, in Old Chinese. 
Being unwilling to split rhyme groups, Dong Tong and Li Fang Kui extended these final voiced stops to whole rhyme groups. The only exceptions were the gay and G groups, Li's asterisk R and asterisk ad, in which the traditional analysis already distinguished the syllables with entering tone contacts. The resulting scarcity of open syllables has been criticized on typological grounds. Wang Li preferred to reallocate words with connections to the entering tone to the corresponding entering tone group, proposing that the final stop was lost after a long vowel. Another perspective is provided by Haudricourt's demonstration that the tones of Vietnamese, which have a very similar structure to those of Middle Chinese, were derived from earlier final consonants. The Vietnamese counterparts of the rising and departing tones derive from a final glottal stop and asterisk s respectively, the latter developing to a glottal fricative asterisk h. These glottal post-codas respectively conditioned rising and falling pitch contours, which became distinctive when the post-codas were lost. Haudricourt also suggested that the Chinese departing tone was reflected in old Chinese derivational suffix asterisk s. The connection with stop finals would then be explained as syllables ending with asterisk ts or asterisk ks, with the stops later disappearing, allowing rhymes with open syllables. The absence of a corresponding labial final could be attributed to early assimilation of asterisk ps to asterisk ts. Pulleyblank supported the theory with several examples of syllables in the departing tone being used to transcribe foreign words ending in s into Chinese. Pulleyblank took Haudricourt's suggestion to its logical conclusion, proposing that the Chinese rising tone had also arisen from a final glottal stop. Mei Su Lin supported this theory with evidence from early transcriptions of Sanskrit words, and pointed out that rising tone words end in a glottal stop in some modern Chinese dialects, e.g. Wenzhounese and some Min dialects. In addition, most of the entering tone words that rhyme with rising tone words in the Xijing end in K. Together, these hypotheses lead to the following set of old Chinese syllable codas. Baxter also speculated on the possibility of a glottal stop occurring after oral stop finals. The evidence is limited, and consists mainly of contacts between rising tone syllables and K finals, which could alternatively be explained as phonetic similarity. To account for phonetic series and rhymes in which MCJ alternates with N, Sergei Starostin proposed that MCN in such cases derived from Old Chinese asterisk R. Other scholars have suggested that such contacts are due to dialectal mixture, citing evidence that asterisk N had disappeared from Eastern dialects by the Eastern Han period. See also Historical Chinese Phonology Notes References Works Cited Further Reading External Links Tutorials Introduction to Chinese Historical Phonology Guillaume Jacques, European Association of Chinese Linguistics Spring School in Chinese Linguistics, International Institute for Asian Studies, Leiden, March 2006. Summer School on Old Chinese Phonology Videos, William Baxter and Laurent Sagart, École des Hautes Etudes and Sciences Sociales, Paris, July 2007 Databases of Reconstructions http colon slash slash starling.rinet.ru slash cgi dash bin slash query dot cgi question mark base name equals datashina igchina and root equals config and morpho equals zero starling database, by Jorge Starostin. The Baxter Sagart Reconstruction of Old Chinese. Shang Gu Yin Shi Yun Dian Wang Shao Zai Tang Shang Gu Yin Zhang Yang Yan Ju Yuan Li Fang Gui Shang Gu Yin Yun Biao.